So this is it. The brand new FX3. Sony's brand new full frame 4K up to 120 frames per second, 10 bit 422, 15 plus stops of dynamic range cinema camera. The specs sound just like the A7S III, so I know what you're thinking already. Why this camera? What's good creative fam, Brandon Washington here. And if you're brand new to the channel, I shoot on a lot of cinema cameras. I shoot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and 6K. I own the Red Komodo. I also own the C70 and I love cinema cameras. So when Sony reached out to me about testing the FX3 and they told me that this was their brand new small body cinema camera, I was super excited. But then once I heard the specs, it pretty much sound like an A7S III, which got me wondering what makes this camera different. And so let's start off with what I noticed first, which is the body. So first off, weighing at just 640 grams, this is Sony's smallest and most lightweight and compact cinema camera that they offer. And honestly, this might be the smallest cinema camera I've ever used. Also, this thing is built like a tank. Having a magnesium alloy body makes this thing very durable and you can feel it when you hold it. Like it is built very well. On top of that, on the actual camera itself, you're gonna find multiple mounting points. You're gonna have mounting points on all four sides of the camera. So that doesn't just help with being able to attach accessories, but also if you decided you wanted to actually mount this thing vertically and do some Instagram stories, TikTok style video recording, you could do that in fact, I was actually able to get this camera mounted onto my Ronin and be able to do some gimbal shots with it. Now sure, some awesome things have been added to the body, but you'll also notice that a couple things are missing. Now the first thing you'll notice that is missing is the actual viewfinder, which for me as someone who uses cameras to shoot video almost 90% of the time, I never use the viewfinder. So it's actually nice to see that that's gone on this camera. So it's not something that's kind of taking away and adding extra height to the camera for no alleged reason. On top of that, you will also notice that the mode dial is missing from this camera. And in place of the mode dial is this giant red red record button. If you didn't know that this camera was for video, this button definitely gives it away. But it's not just a giant red record button, but also when you actually press this button, you'll notice that it itself illuminates. And then there's also a tally light on the back of the camera that illuminates. And then there's another tally light on the front of the camera that illuminates. So pretty much that whole situation where you think you're recording and then you stop it because you're not, you're done recording, but then you realize that now it's actually actually recording and then you when you get ready to start your next shot you press it again I know you guys have done this before I like you you've done this whole process before I know I'm not the only one it's almost impossible to do that with this camera because it's going to light up to let you know that it is recording now you can turn that off in the settings if you like but I like having it on because I never want to accidentally think I'm recording and I'm not now moving on from the body of this camera there is one other huge big difference with this camera that really lets you know that it is trying to sit into Sony's cinema line and that is the fact that this camera comes built in with CineTone. Now CineTone is the default preset for this camera but it is a phenomenal set. Now I've been shooting with CineTone actually quite a bit recently. If you guys missed it I did an entire video on the FX6 so I got a chance to kind of test out CineTone a little bit already but shooting it on this camera has made me fall in love with it. Now, there are some major drawbacks with CineTone, which I'll get to in a second, but one of the biggest benefits of CineTone is how good it just looks out of camera with no editing. I've been shooting with CineTone on this camera and have been loving the colors and the way that it looks straight out of camera, which just makes it easier to run and gun and shoot, especially if you're not wanting to do a ton of grading. Now, the big drawback when it comes to shooting on CineTone is with the dynamic range. I mentioned earlier that this camera has 15 plus stops of dynamic range, but you're only really gonna see that when you're shooting in S-Log3. You can see in this side-by-side -side comparison that S-Log3 is going to drastically give you more dynamic range than when shooting with 
Cinetone. Now, the Cinetone does do a decent job at blooming those highlights, but you can see a pretty harsh fall off once you start blowing out those highlights. And I can tell you as someone who's been trying to grade this footage for a couple days now, it is really hard to grade Cinetone footage. It is designed to be done. So you're not gonna get as much latitude when it comes to shooting with it, but it is something that's nice to have built into the camera so you can just shoot and be done. Now another big thing that we have to talk about when it comes to a new camera is obviously the quality. Now as I mentioned before, this camera can shoot in 4K at up to 120 frames per second and I honestly think that all the footage looks amazing. If you've seen any footage from the A7S 3 and you thought those videos looked great, well that's pretty much what you can expect from this camera and that's because they actually are packing the exact same sensor. That's right, it's the exact same sensor as the A7S III. So again, it kind of makes you wonder, well, why should you pick up this camera? And it's not just the image quality that's exactly the same. You're also gonna get all the same autofocusing points as well. So you're going to get the eye autofocus on this camera, which I can attest it is crazy sticky good. As you guys know, with a lot of the cinema cameras that I currently shoot on, I'm used to pulling focus manually. And on the C70, the autofocus is kind of lackluster, but seeing amazing autofocus on this camera was actually a huge game changer for me because it was autofocus that I really thought I could use. I mean, my Komodo has autofocus, but it's not really all that great. The C70 has autofocus, but it's also not all that great. But the eye autofocus on this camera, phenomenal. So continuing along that journey, trying to figure out what makes this camera different than the A7S III comes with one huge accessory. And that is this guy. This is the actual top handle that mounts directly to the FX3. Now, if you're wondering, well, can I use this top handle with the A7S3? No, you really can't because the FX3 actually has these threaded holes at the very top of it. And this thing literally attaches through the cold shoe and screws directly in for a snug fit. With the audio top handle interface built onto the camera, you're actually going to expand your audio capabilities. First of all, you're gonna get two full-size XLR inputs on the top handle. You're also gonna get a 3.5 millimeter jack on here as well. So if you have like some lavaliers or a microphone that just needs to plug directly in, you could absolutely do that. Also, you'll notice that Sony does have their boom microphone installed on this kit, but you can actually take this microphone off and put your own boom microphone in here because there's a whole little clip mechanism here and you can put your own microphone in, plug it in via XLR, and be good to go. And not to be outdone by the camera body, of course on this thing you actually are gonna get three additional threaded holes. So if you wanted to attach your monitor directly on here, you absolutely could. Now this is not the only way to get professional audio into this camera. On the side of this camera, there are actually three additional doors and one of the doors at the very top is going to give you your microphone input. Now this is a 3.5 millimeter microphone input like at the top of the top handle and you also are gonna find that there's a headphone jack right underneath it. Next to that, you're gonna find a full-size HDMI port right here, which is fantastic. I hate micro HDMI ports, full-size HDMI ports all the way, every single time. So I love that that is here. But then you'll also find at the bottom down here, a USB-C port as well as a multi-use port. And this is not just a normal USB-C port. This is just like in the A1 where it actually can attach directly to their Xperia Pro cell phone and be able to get 5G connectivity directly to this camera. So if you wanted to use this camera for live streamings, you absolutely could by connecting it to their phone. Now, just because I know some people are gonna ask about these doors, they are fantastic. I absolutely love the doors on the side. There's only one major problem and that is did I mention this thing has a full swivel screen? With the full swivel screen, it does run into the door when it is completely open. So if you are using this camera for like audio or wanting to monitor headphones, and then you try to open this guy up and turn it, it does run into the door, which is kind of a big bummer. That is one thing I do love about the A7S III is that the microphone port has its own door, so you can have the mic input going and still be able to swivel the screen, but on this one, that's just not the case. Okay, okay, I get it. I, I can still hear you asking me, Brandon, this is awesome. There's a lot of cool new things about it. Clearly, it's a more video-focused camera, so there's some things that have been changed. 
but why this camera? And and why now? I mean, let's face it, the A7S III for a lot of shooters, myself included, was about two years behind when we really wanted it. I mean, we were waiting on that camera for a long time. And when it finally dropped, shooters and Sony shooters around the world rejoiced. But now, just a couple months later, we're getting this, the FX3. It is a part of Sony's cinema line, but yet it shares a lot of similarities with the A7S III. So here's pretty much how I can break this camera down and really kind of help you know who this camera is for. So first, this camera is clearly built with video first and secondary for photos. Unlike the A7S III that's kind of a hybrid camera, this camera is built for video first and foremost. Everything about it is designed, the tally lights, the record button, everything is designed for video. Now, sure, it can take photos and it's gonna have all the photo modes that you would expect to find on this camera. And that's awesome and there's a mode button for that to allow you to navigate through that system, but this is not a photographer's camera. If you're a photographer, you shouldn't pick this up. You should really be looking at maybe an A7S III or an A7 III or an A C3, what is it? I don't know, they have a lot of cameras. But you should not be considering this as a photographer. This is a cinematographer's camera. Other nice little video features that have been added on here is your wide and tele servo toggle right here at the front. I mean, this is not something that most people probably are gonna use, especially if you're using some of their prime lenses. But if you do find yourself using one of their servo lenses, boom, that's built in there for you to use. Another big reason why I think some certain people should consider this camera is, I mean, there's no short of rumors talking about Sony's brand new drone that has been announced. And I think this is probably going to be the perfect camera for that drone system. With it being so lightweight and having all the mounting points, also having the ability to connect via 5G and be able to send that signal back over to a controller, I think this is gonna be the perfect camera for those systems. And then lastly, when you look at the line of cinema cameras, not the Alpha series, but the actual cinema cameras that Sony has been releasing, this is pretty much the last one to get released. They started off high with their Vitus cameras, and then you have the FX9, the FX6, and now, of course, you have the FX3. And this is gonna be a perfect pairing for anyone who's already shooting with the Sony FX system. I mean, now you have an amazing, low-cost, relatively speaking, B camera, as well as a potential crash cam for cinema shooters, and this is going to be able to fit in a lot more places. And because this is using the same system as the FX6 and the FX9, now you have a camera that you could throw on the side of a car or put inside of a car, and you know it's going to match up well with all the other cameras. You know, I know the big elephant in the room is that this camera does not have built-in NDs, which is something that I would love to see in this camera. And also, with it having this giant fan on the back, well, I say giant fan. It's not a giant fan, but it's noticeable. It's actually fairly quiet, but you will notice the vents on it, which makes it less water resistant. But with having this fan built into it, I really wish that this camera also gave us some more specs. Like maybe it could shoot 6K or 8K because it has the ability to handle all that extra heat, but it doesn't. And with these little things missing from this camera, it still makes it very difficult to say, should you buy the A7S III or this camera, the FX3? And so here's pretty much what I would say. If you are a video shooter, 100% video shooter, you're not a content creator, you're not someone who's trying to you know, take some photos here and there and those type of things, I would say that this camera is the way to go knowing that you still very well could take some photos. But if you are someone who is still trying to take photos, you're more of a content creator, Instagram, that kind of stuff, the A7S III is still a phenomenal camera. With the addition of the audio handle, this is going to be massive for video shooters because audio is so important when it comes to shooting video. And so that is the reason why this camera, in my opinion, is more so slated for those who are looking at video. Let's face it, it's a polarizing camera. I've had it for a couple weeks and been testing it and trying to figure out what makes it really different. And it's a really hard question to answer. But let me know what you guys think about this camera. I personally think that it's an awesome camera. I love it. I love shooting with it, but I'm not gonna you know, sweep it underneath the rug. 
it's fairly polarizing. Let me know your thoughts down below and maybe we can have a discussion about it. Thanks so much for checking out this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.